Hello, this is Charles from Cedalino Photography and today we're going to look at something that's fairly controversial and that is sky replacement. So we're going to take a look at Photoshop Elements, Photoshop, and Luminar AI. Let's go ahead and jump in. Let's start in Photoshop Elements. I'm going to open one of the photos that I took of a mill in Kentucky. When I select open and select my raw file, it's going to open in the raw editor. Now for the sake of this video, I'm just going to bump up the exposure just a tiny bit and then open it up in Photoshop. Once it's open, it will show in the show open files palette right down here. I'm going to go to guided and then I'm going to select perfect landscape because as you can see it says replace the sky. Here are your guided edits. First, crop or straighten your photo, then remove the haze. Now I don't need to do either one, so I'm going to jump right to my sky. I'm going to select the orange sky because I think that matches the photo pretty well. Once it's done, it's going to match the tones and replace the sky. As you go down the guided edits, you can make additional adjustments. If you want to change the opacity of the sky, you can do so right here. And this is the brightness. It's a tad dark for me, so I'm going to brighten this up just a little bit. The next option is the auto match color tone. The problem with this is it's going to darken your image to match the sky. And I kind of want mine a little bit brighter, so I'm going to leave this one off. You can click the move tool and you can move the sky around. You can see that there's a few clouds in here, and I'm putting the clouds to where you can see them. As we scroll down, you can use the shift edge to shift the edge of your mask to either include more of the leaves or part of your background or to include more of the sky. Now you can see that I shifted the edge and now the leaves are no longer floating. You can refine the mask even more by clicking the refine edge brush. You can either add or subtract to your mask. Now I kind of like the way it's looking right now so I'm not going to refine my edge but you can do this when you have time. The next thing is is if there are any mistakes that you want to get out of your photo you can use the spot healing brush and then fill in any kind of areas that you don't like or want to repair. When you're done with this you can click next. Now you can just save this out and look at your masterpiece or you could go into the expert mode and do further edits. So let me show you what that looks like. Now this image at the very top right here is all of your images together so we want to turn this one off. This black and white one right here is your mask. So if I zoom in a little bit, I'm using the control plus to zoom in, we can get a better look at how Photoshop Elements mask my leaves. Now it did a pretty good job, but if you want to do even further refinement, you can click on your mask right here and you can either paint with the white or paint with the black. Anywhere you paint with white is going to paint in the sky. Right now you can see my cursor right here. The brush is small, but it's not small enough, so I'm going to use my left bracket key to make the brush even smaller. Then we can go in here and we can paint part of the sky and get really detailed in here with where we want the sky to appear. Now this is going to take a lot of time if you have a lot of things like leaves and small pieces of detail. If you want to erase something, you can paint with the black. I'll hit the X on my keyboard to switch the colors and then I'll paint with black. As you can see, I'm actually taking away parts of the sky right in here. And there we have it, our sky replacement in Photoshop Elements. Let's zoom out by going to Control Zero and seeing how it did. It did a pretty good job, especially if you match the sky with your landscape. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what Photoshop looks like. Now that I have Photoshop open, I'm going to open the same file that I opened in Photoshop Elements, this raw file. Once I open it, it will open in the raw editor just like it did in Photoshop Elements. As you can see, it saved the same adjustment as Photoshop Elements because it is opening it in the raw editor. Once again, I'm going to select Open. Now we're going to go to Edit and then Sky Replacement. Next, we're going to click the down arrow and select a sky. I'm going to use this orangish blue one because this one's similar to the one we used in Photoshop Elements. Next, I need to zoom the photo, so I'm going to use Control Plus to zoom the photo. And then I'm going to move onto an area 
that has the leaves so we can see how Photoshop does versus Photoshop elements. Once again, I'm going to shift the edge of my leaves. And then I'm going to change the brightness. I'm going to warm up my photo by moving the slider to the right. And as you can see, there are a few more adjustments that you have in Photoshop compared to Photoshop Elements. At the very bottom, I'm going to change the color adjustment a little bit to make it a little bit more orange. And then I'm going to select OK. Now this one's a little bit bluer than the Photoshop Elements, but it still looks pretty good. Although you can see that there are still some areas where the leaves are floating, but it looks pretty close to the same as Photoshop Elements. And just like in Photoshop Elements, you can click on the layer mask right here and you can select a brush. And then you can paint by adding or subtracting to your mask and making this a little bit better looking. Let me zoom back out by hitting Control Zero. And as you can see, this one looks pretty good as well. Photoshop does have a few more tools than Photoshop Elements, but it doesn't really matter because with the Photoshop Elements, you can use the paintbrush and add in those little areas that you want to correct. So, so far, both of them are doing a pretty good job of changing my sky. The last one we're going to look at is Luminar. Once you have the Luminar interface up, I'm going to go to File and Edit a Single Image and click on my RAW file. It automatically opens the RAW file and you do not have to do any Adobe Camera Raw conversion. Because this day was a little bit overcast, I'm going to click the Overcast template. And then I'm going to select Dynamic Results. You can see that it made this a little bit brighter and you can see that it's actually showing the moon because I took a picture and it had the moon in the background. Once I'm done with that, I'll click on Edit and then I'll go to this palette right here. Then I'll go to Sky. And then from Sky Selection, I will pick one of these skies. Now, it does not give you the thumbnail of what the sky looks like, so you will just have to go by the description. Let's go to Dramatic Sunset 2. Luminar is pretty fast at putting your sky onto your background. Now let's adjust it a little bit more by going to the Horizontal Blending. As you can see, right here, as I bring it over to the right, it's bringing that horizontal line up just a little bit. I'm going to bring it back down just a tiny bit. Relight the Scene does a little bit the same as Photoshop's Auto Tone, where you could try to match the foreground with your sky. The last of the adjustments that we have is Sky Global, where we can make the sky just a little bit darker if we want. Then at the very bottom, we can show the advanced settings. Close gaps is the same in Photoshop as being able to shift the edge if you don't like the mask, so we can close some of the gaps. Sky Local blends in your original sky from your photo. Sky Defocus does exactly what it says, Sky Defocus, so it defocuses your sky. We have Flip Sky if you want to flip it upside down. Kind of give it a different look. Atmospheric haze, we can take some of that haze out of your photo. And last but not least, we can adjust the temperature of your sky. I know sky replacement is a controversial subject for most photographers, but if you want to spruce up your photo and make it a little bit nicer and possibly print out a photo that you wouldn't necessarily save, by putting a new sky in there, I think it's a great thing. So if you have Photoshop elements, Photoshop, or if you want to give Luminar AI a try, all three are good options for replacing your sky. If you haven't done so already, smash the thumbs up and the like, put a comment below, and stay tuned for more videos. Cheers!